Welcome, listeners. We are here with uh, Pete Levin and Dan Levy. Levy. Fuck, I said it wrong. Close Dan enough. Levy. Fuck. Close enough. Put an I in Levi, right? Definitely. We could we could do Levin and Levy. I'm just now I'm just confusing things. <laughs> well, um, and you guys are working on what right now? Uh, working on a short film. Mm -hmm. uh, called I'm Scared. It's, uh, it's based on the work of Greg Simpkins, also known as Crayola. He's a, um, he's many things. He's a pop surrealist artist. He's, um, a street artist. Um, he's got some, he's had some really amazing solo shows and some, mm -hmm. some, uh, some hardcover books he's put together of his paintings and, um... He's one heck of a guy. And a, and, a, and a decent dude on top of all that. Just yeah. a really, really nice guy and um, really good collaborator. You know, um, sorry, I'm, I'm already getting into it. You, you just no, just, go ahead. Okay. Get into right, it, right, friend. Right. Get, get into, into it. it. But, uh, For the audio guys, I, a lot of people have compared him uh, or have said he's the, you know, our, our generation Salvador Dali. So if you get that kind of image of very surreal, a lot of animals. Nice. But uh, the collaboration, I digress. <laughs> oh yeah, no. I mean, uh, Dan has a, a lot of connections in the in the, the the contemporary art world, and so I think I mean you have a lot of connections all over the place, Dan. But uh, you know, you have definitely a, a a big art aficionado. So you know, one thing that I think you want to do is is take some of these things from the contemporary art world, some of the the design elements that you know might not necessarily be prevalent in stop motion yet, it might be a different way of thinking about design. Um, and bringing that into stop motion and also bringing stop motion into the art world yeah. and, and sort of having, you know, we have some really great artists in our world and then, you know, there's these great artists that Dan knows in the contemporary art world. And, you know, I think what we were looking for with this project is, is, Finding an artist um, where not only we could he had a, a a rich world that we could draw from and a, a visual style that we could draw from, but also somebody who would know that we're we're working in a different medium. We're not making a painting. We're making you know a stop motion film and and uh, you know open to collaboration with with other artists who are going to interpret that and also maybe add their own flair to it a little bit but still keeping it a cohesive whole and and that was our goal and i you know i, I think it's you know we're we're actually finishing up uh production today um so the whole thing's not you know put together yet as a final project but uh so far i think we've been really happy with how everything's been turning out and how our, our teams come together with this yeah yeah, everyone that I show it to uh, is fairly impressed, you know, that, that we were able to take Greg's world and translate it into stop motion. Nice. Um, yeah, and to go even further back, you know, the, this didn't all happen overnight. You know, Pete and I had worked together on other stop, mo stop motion stuff, and we talked about contemporary art and stop motion, you know, four or five years ago. Uh, just weren't sure how and what it looked like mm -hmm. and then you know the artist comes along the right situation comes along and here we are so I think it's something that needed to happen there's prolific um, artists that are working uh, right now we're in a I think a very great time for uh, arts and, and a great city for it also oh, LA yeah. is popping yeah. Yeah. yeah we're in the right in the middle of it. we're in the epicenter so it wasn't hard for me to make all these connections and friends we're all you know kind of a hive mind and they're all huge fans, almost, I'd say nine and a half out of ten of, of these artists that I talk to, work with, um, are friends with, love stop motion, uh, sure. including Greg Simkin. So it was such an easy match, I mean, to, you know... To Greg's approach. had pictures of the, the elephant yeah. from the island of Lost Toys yeah. and his oh, work yeah. before, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at, at first when, when, when we started this, he was saying like, oh yeah, no, I've, I've totally featured... Um, you know, different different stop motion things in my paintings before, and I was like, well, maybe he has. And I started looking, and I was like, oh, whoa, I, he actually has. I, you know, I hadn't noticed the, the little elephant in the corner here before. He's a strong advocate for uh, the animation, you know, stop motion. Yeah, yeah, and, and he, you know, he's got a couple kids of his own, and, and I think he's 
trying to raise them on the right cartoons and and uh, get them in the right direction. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he loves the old stuff. You know, oh, he, nice. he, you can you can see like he's done. Um, uh, one of our characters in this actually has like the old like 1920s Mickey Mouse style pupils and he has like a lot of characters you'll see a lot of posters in the background that have those um, you know 1920s 1930s Warner Brothers and and Disney uh, black and white look to them um, but then he also likes you know the 1960s Rankin Bass stuff and so you know we have a lot of the same influences um, I mean one of Greg's big influences is uh, Watership Down mm -hmm. uh, and you'll see in his his bunny logo that he uses on, mm -hmm. on most of his things, uh, sort of a reference to uh, Watership Down. And, and so he's always had animation as something that's part of his work. And I don't know, we're, we're taking that, those, those references and making it like a direct connection now, so. That's awesome, that's awesome. How did that all happen though? I mean, how did, how did it kind of come into shape? You just approached him and said, hey, let's make a cartoon. I've been talking to Greg about making a, tar a cartoon a uh, few years now, you know, the same as Pete and I, you know, you talk about what you'd like to do, and um, I left stop motion, uh, went back into uh, live action, and then I was out of live action, you know, as jobs often come and go, and stop motion just kind of pulled me back in. Um, I think, you know, one of the genesis uh the night of Greg's solo show. It'll be going on the third solo show because he's got another one coming up. So three shows ago, it was uh, Robin Yanukis, mm -hmm. myself, and Greg. And it was just like, hey, now's the time. You know, like, I'm not employed. Greg just finished this show. Let's let's go to Kickstarter and ask for some money. Uh, enough people like Greg that sure. maybe they'll give us some money. Sure. Yeah. And then, then Rob and Yanukos uh, went on to uh, help us art direct this and, and help do the uh, the paint jobs on the puppets. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I think, uh, I don't know, everybody was just real excited about the collaboration. Yeah. And that I was lucky enough that these guys brought me on. Oh, uh, Pete was like, God damn, we've been talking about this for five years. It's about <laughs> time, Levy, let's go. Let's make this short. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's about patience. I Who'd you guys meet? Uh, Robot Chicken. Is yeah, that Robot Chicken season two. Sweet. Yeah, I uh, I didn't know I wanted to be in stop motion. I just know I wanted to how work. Did, but how did you get it? Were you doing it animating or no, painting or no? Producing there's just, or? there's a fun story okay. um, of how I got into Moral Oral, which brought me into the world of Shadow and okay. Robot Chicken. And sure. I didn't know what I was gonna do, so I, it was literally my first day, and they paired me with Pete. <laughs> and I mean, good you know, choice. Yeah, yeah, sick minds think alike. So here we are. I think you know. Uh, yeah, I remember that. I was sort of like doing double duty um, between uh, animating and and assisting. Mm -hmm. And I think we we need to go out and and get a uh, hair gel. Was it? It was hair goo. He he was doing a whole shot himself of boiling water on Moral Oral. And for the listeners of home, I, I do not have a full head of hair. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> um, and no, it's funny. You have a full face of hair. I do, I do. It all, it all migrated down. <laughs> it, it worked. I feel like it worked out perfectly because we needed some kind of clear hair product, and I was very rockabilly in high school. And I was like, Pete, I've got you. Let's go to Target. And like, we went on this great journey where, like, oh hey, where are you from? Where are you from? We really got to know each other. We really clicked and. We like the same thing, so you know, and I think it's not motion, it's that way in the community, you know, it's a real small family and usually you click with people. You hope. Sometimes yeah. you don't. <laughs> yeah, you can't always, I mean, that's yeah. the rule of life, but But you, yeah. it's also such a small community that, you know, you can't be a jerk for very long and stay no. part of the community. No, not at all. Uh, so Pete and I just became fast friends and then we both moved on, he stayed in stop motion, I moved on to live action, and then right as I was losing my job from live action, mm -hmm. Um, I saw that Pete was working on this, uh, was going to direct this little live action. They needed some help. Not little at all. I mean, it was the second uh, thing that they were shooting at the YouTube studios, which is a really nice facility. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm unemployed once again. Uh -huh, I want to come help. So, yeah, we reconnected strongly over, you know, four or five days shooting that, some mm -hmm. web shorts. It was a lot of fun. And... It was like, hey, I think I'm going to do this Kickstarter. I mean, if you help me, we could do this. And he was in, you know? 
That's what we've been waiting. So that's just, it's funny how things culminate. He's a nice guy, this bearded man. Yeah, he's all right. right. <laughs> he's all right. <laughs> he's all right. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that was the genesis. And then we went to, to Kickstarter and people believed in what we were doing. And, you know, it's been a lot of time, a, a fair amount of time, a lot of work and a lot of fun. Mm. Cool. So and now we are we're not we're we're really not done but we wrapped production on the characters which is nice. That's huge. Yeah, that's huge. So, and yeah, we're we're just great. wrapping production on our very last shot in the other room right now as we're speaking. Eric <laughs> yeah. Atkins is is lighting the very last shot which doesn't have any puppets in it. But uh, once we're done with that, then there's going to be I don't know post. Well, we're we're about two thirds the way, a little bit more than two thirds the way through VFX right now. Cool. Um. But yeah, we still have all the sound design and score and editing and color correction and all that. So, you know, it's uh, and then once that's done, we gotta figure out, you know, our plan of attack for getting this out into the world as well. So, uh, sure. you know, there's there's still a lot ahead of us, but it's it's nice to reach these benchmarks and um, especially with, you know, I think we did a pretty good job on Kickstarter, but it, it's still like this is a low budget thing and and the budget. Especially when we had something like sixteen or seventeen puppets, um, it gets it gets drained very quickly, and uh, so you know to be able to finish something that's a low budget thing and to still maintain uh, what I think is a pretty pretty good level of quality throughout. Um, you know, I I feel pretty proud of our team. Hmm. Yeah, we wouldn't be here without the team. You know, going back to Eric Adkins' name was brought up, and you know, he Who animated. Who was animating? There are several animators. Mm -hmm. I heard you had a guest animator. Yeah, well, I I did a lot of the animation myself, mm -hmm. uh, and then Musay Brooker did some animation. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelsey Stillmaker, Melissa Shepard, Sarah Godemar, Matt Manning, Eileen Colehep. Should I leave anybody out? Got some good people there. Yeah, yeah it's, that's a good crew. You know, I mean, and kind of like a dream team in a sense. Well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna dark out a little bit here, but like, I mean, when I came on, oh my gosh, over ten years ago now on Robot Chicken, a uh, first season as as an, as an assistant animator, like these guys were the people where I was just like, you know, just just floored by their ability and um, humbled and you know to think that you know not only would we all still be friends and be in touch you know 11 years later but you know that that they would sort of help be a, a creative part of this thing that we're making is just I don't know I mean I, I it's it's a it's a great feeling you know I, and that's why I don't think guest animator is quite the right term because sure. that implies I feel like it implies that we allowed them to come animate <laughs> when really I'm grateful and I think you just said the same thing that that they would come and animate on this piece for us so yeah. you know I don't know we're the guests in their <laughs> world of animation really like so I, I'm very grateful for all these wonderful people. Uh, Hui Vu. Uh, yeah. Oh, you got Hui. Yeah, he, he, he did your sets. He was, yeah. He and was you know, he, he was he was really excited too. He's a big fan of uh, Greg Simpkins mm -hmm. and and knew his work coming into this, and so he had that connection already. And you know, part part of our thing with with finding the right crew for this, um, which I feel like we really did, um, is finding people that, well, if they knew Greg's work already, that was an absolute bonus, but people who were just really excited to work on, you know, a smaller project, the the money's, you know, not as, as good on a project like this. We can't really compete with the studios for that. Um, but, you know, I think we're trying to do something a little bit different and, and we're also trying to give people like a, you know, room to, room to sort of be experts at what we hire them to be experts at and stretch and their legs yeah mm -hmm. you know um the puppet build for example puppet build for example uh rob saunders headed that up and and i think it was his idea to do sort of a henson style build mm -hmm. where each builder gets to take a, a a character and see it all the way through from beginning to end that's great mm -hmm. and uh it's not something that there's time to do on a lot of sort of the assembly line puppet departments right. and so i think a lot of the people doing the building 
you know, they, they really enjoy being able to see the character through from Greg's initial sketch to the final, you know, puppet. And, and I mean, you know, of course there's some overlap and there's some, you know, puppets where like one person did the, the painting, one person did the wardrobe, one person built it, but, you know, I think there was a connection between individual builders and puppets on this, um, just like there's a connection with Huey and, and, and building the set. Um, and, uh, and, and the prop builders too, you know, I mean, I think everybody really took our initial designs from Greg to heart and, yeah. and just brought them into three dimensions. And, and in some cases, you know, kind of improved on them too. And I think Greg would be the first to say that like, you know, his design, you know, they, they look good, but then like there's something that kind of brings them to life in this process that's yeah. that's really nice too, you know. There's a, a tiny a spider proppet that, that he's now using as reference in his current body of work, you oh, know, because nice. now he can just get every angle, it's not just from his mind, so, nice. you know, one informs the next, it's really fun. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, one, one of the great sort of meta moments was the first time Greg uh, came to set, and, uh, He's, well, first of all, he was like, you guys got the lighting right. This looks like the lighting from one of my paintings. But secondly, he said, uh, I want to paint this. Oh, nice. And so we were doing our interpretation of his paintings, and so he wanted to do a painting of our interpretation. So I took that to be a big compliment that, that nice. uh, you know, that that's, was his, one of his first thoughts when he saw things out on the stages. Very cool. I mean, you guys have been doing this for how long? It's been a year or more, right? Um, I, I went and since... visited you at uh, uh, Kyoto Brothers. Yeah, yeah, that's where we did the puppet stuff. build. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And sculpting. That was a year ago this past February. Oh yeah. my gosh, wow. 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 puppets. That's insane. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, and and obviously if, if this was a, a bigger budget thing, we probably could have gotten some of this done faster. Uh, different people have day jobs and... and um, you know, not necessarily able to have as big a crew as you would have on a on a job with a bigger budget. So you know, there's uh, a longer time for one person to do something than for three people to do the same job. But um, but and that then, being said, like you know, I mean, at the end of the day, like I think it's more about what the project looks like yeah. than what calendar day you got it finished yeah. on. Right. Exactly. When, you know, when you just need to honor and be good to your Kickstarter people and there's no hard deadline, it gives you that option to make sure that the, mm -hmm. the piece is, you know, quality and not yeah. rushed. Yeah. And as far as Kickstarter as a platform, as long as everybody's informed, they, they will be happy. Cool. Yeah. Um, so and and I and I'm hoping I think maybe I'm biased, but I'm thinking and hoping that they they'll like and they'll be happy that they waited for, you know, this piece because it's it's beautiful. Nice. Right, what's with the toys? Did you guys did did he sculpt them and then you guys sent them out to a uh, a reproductive place in China? There was a third party sculpt. Okay. Uh, Kevin Pascal. Okay. Uh, which is someone that Greg works with, and then we worked in conjunction with a toy company, 3D Retro. Um, yeah. And we released them during the Kickstarter uh, as incentives because uh, Greg hadn't done a toy in quite some time, and there's quite the demand <laughs> for the yeah. vinyl toy. So to, to to give you an idea, somebody on Instagram posted a picture of a tattoo of Ralph, the main <laughs> character from our short film, that he has filling up his whole calf muscle, and uh, you know, yeah, Dan wow. showed that to me, and I, I told Dan, I said, well. The movie better not suck now because this guy's got that for for good. But um, no, I mean it's it's amazing. Like uh, the people out there who are really into Greg's work are really really into it. And yeah. um, you know we thought that the toy is like something you can hold. That's that's one of the great things about stop motion is the fact that all of these things are real and you can touch them. And then to have like a, a physical representation of this character. Um, I don't know. I think it's pretty special, and I've I've certainly never had um, a character made of something that I've directed before. So it's it's certainly fun for us too. Yeah. You know, I've I've worked on uh, a ton of shows or for a ton of shows that get fan art, and it's you know it's always really exciting. But 
for this to get fan art or to see a tattoo, a piece of, you know, art tattooed on somebody. Uh, and then the toy, you know, I hand delivered at one of Greg's events, one of these toys to a, a little girl that's a Greg fan, and she made her own stop motion with it by the end of the night. Yeah, that was <laughs> wow. really cute. And to that's see cute. that, it was just, you know, that's the jazz, that's the jam right there, man. That's, yeah, that's why I want to do this. Nice. At the end of the day, that's warming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that's really cool. Yeah. it's really cool. So you're at the the tail end of this, and you guys don't know what you're doing next, right? Yeah. We have a couple of uh, irons in the fire. Okay. Um, but uh, I stuff you can't talk about yet because it's planning stages. No, I mean, and ultimately there's a, a physical product. A lot of people don't um, understand. Even if you have read the Kickstarter, it's a little confusing. You know, we sure. we through necessity and everything else created a, a physical product that's you know. Oh, not a movie and not a book and it's somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. it's big M two O's with umlauts and a K you can pronounce it yourself um, <laughs> I like mook yeah see you know, it's, is it a, a mook is it a mook but uh, we, so we have this this product that will be released and you'll get a download code in the book it's 65 pages um, and nice. hopefully it'll be the first in a series where you'll see short animation um, with the behind the scenes you know you get the graphic arts you get all of it in one look <laughs> oh, okay I get it yeah. so yeah I mean I think I think I know what you're doing what, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're looking at it like like sort of like a uh, like a children's book where we have like stills from the film that can act as the illustrations and then the, the text from that and and but we also want to feature the a lot of the behind the scenes photos that we have, um, maybe some artist profiles, maybe uh, the storyboards by Jonathan Wayshack that are mm -hmm. really, really incredible boards. Um, yeah. Where I feel like, you know, it's any any time anybody saw the animatic, the first response was who did the boards? Yeah. Uh, and so I mean I don't know I think there's there's so much fun stuff that I feel like. Um, looking at Greg's original sketches, looking at the puppet builders and the process of building things. Um, I don't know, I mean, guys like us, we we not only love the finished product and our fans the finished product of, of animation like this, but we also, we love the process and we love our own process and seeing other people's processes and... Um, I started a podcast called DOS Process. Uh, yeah. I love the process. Love the nice, process. nice plug, Dan. Nice plug. <laughs> 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 Great plug. So uh, tune into DOS process. But to digress <laughs> into what uh, Pete was saying, you know, everything I feel like, except for what I've done, which was really just facilitate, everything that these guys have done is a work of art. Um, the storyboards, the sculpts of the puppet, the puppet build. Each one of these puppets is a piece of art. Oh, yeah. Uh, the lighting is a piece of art, what Eric Atkins has done, Huey's work, everybody that touched this, you know, the animators and especially, you know, Pete, his vision for this whole thing, it's all a piece of art. So it's art on art on art, mm. which is, you know, again, that's the jam right there. Yeah, it's the, just making art, beautiful the, art. This aesthetic that it has is very um, appealing. It's very, it gives to a cartoony kind of feel and it's, uh, I'm in love with the tiger. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful, right? It's gorgeous. I uh, and, it, and it looks so if much. It's missing like... when I leave. You know what? <laughs> it, it, the, the funny thing is, it, we'll we'll show you a, a Greg sketch of it. Also, the the puppet looks so much like Greg's sketch. It's kind of uncanny. That was that was Brent Johnson who who built that one uh, with a with a paint job by Robin Yanikos and nice. um, yeah, it's just. It, you know, the, his his drawing had this crazy perspective, and then they built that crazy perspective into the puppet. Yeah. Um, Little animatable legs in the back. Yeah, yeah. I, and the, the thing is, like, a lot of these puppets, they got so... The whole film is less than four minutes long, so, you know, nobody got, like, that much screen time. Yeah. So, you know, I think we're ready to be like, hey, let's make, a, like, a little spinoff yeah, show with this definitely. character. Yeah, there, definitely. There's so many beautiful puppets that, you know, unfortunately can't get that much screen time, but hopefully, you know, someone realizes that they need to see the bigger world. Gallery show. Yeah, yeah. It's totally. definitely something that's been talked about to showcase the, you know, Art. the set and yeah. the pieces and the you know, just everything. This is Greg's work with a whole bunch of other artists interpreting his visions. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's really art cool. upon art upon art. Exactly. You can't beat it. But it's also it's also something that's accessible, you know. I think a, a lot of times when people start talking about art, it sounds like it's either pretentious or scary or whatever. But yeah. I, I think the nice thing about uh, the, the, this contemporary art and especially like, you know, the stuff in Los Angeles and the street art and the pop surrealism is it's all super accessible and super fun and I mean, you know, not all of it's fun. Some of it's dark, but mm-hmm. like even the dark stuff's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I think it's 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 really like, I mean, we have no uh, apart from like the, the toys or whatever. Like, there's not like a big like like commercial push behind this. It's not like we have like a, a brand like Star Wars or whatever. We're making this because we're fans of Greg's work and and you know. We want to make something cool with it, and we're fans of, of you know, stop motion. So, yeah, I mean, but there's a vision. Yeah. There's a vision, and you guys are putting that vision out there, which is great. Oh, thanks. You know? Yeah, thank you. It's very cool. I like it. It's uh, it's. Well, I haven't seen much ex- except for the character design, the characters, and then the set. But from what I've seen here, it looks amazing. Ah, oh, thanks. I mean, that shark is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got a a little. Is he a what is this guy? I know chocolate eclair. Chocolate eclair. Yeah. Is he like a ghost or something? Or? He's he's the the um, <clears throat> sentient cream from inside of the chocolate eclair <laughs> that that haunts this little kid uh, who's for some reason he's he's frightened of of the sentient cream inside of chocolate eclairs. Yeah, I can relate. Yeah. Just... Well, uh, <laughs> sure, sure. There was a bevy of other puppets that are uh, tucked away for safekeeping now, but there's this beautiful bee that uh, Marta de Costa made that's mm-hmm. gorgeous and it's flocked and the wings are beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's little things that we've had nuances in there for the art scene. Uh, Alex Pardee's bunny wit is actually sailing the little bee. Oh, yeah, he's behind the little steering wheel. You know, and it's like there's a little shout out to Alex who's doing great work. So you know, that's the hope is keep making these great little pieces with all these wonderful artists. Right. Yeah, so it's great. Well, it's, it's fun to see because you mentioned Brent, you mentioned Rob, and you mentioned Martha. You mentioned all these people I know and the animators and. Uh, and a lot of people that are going to be listening to this probably won't know this, but I've seen these people grow, and you've seen these people grow. So you see, like, the level of their art get better and better and better, the oh, scale yeah. and everything. And, and, you know, Brent's puppet making has gotten way better. Yeah. I shouldn't say better, but it has in How do you say that without being insulting? It's Basically, gotten, it's gotten get crazy to be, good. Get gotten more to grow. And yeah. then more tools and his utility belt. They all have, where, you know? That's and, that, yeah. I feel like, you know, we all have, as, as everybody in the community, like, if you, if you look at... You know, where we were. Here, Brent, you were good when I first started working. <laughs> just so you know. So. No, but I, I, mean, I think I think anybody who, who who looks at us as a community and how yeah. Los Angeles stop motion has grown in the last ten years, um, on an individual basis, we've all gotten better, and on a macro basis, the whole every everything's been streamlined. We know, you know, the studios know more efficient ways to make things. Right. For short films, we know more efficient ways to do them. We know we, we actually can do short films like this because of what we've learned in the Los Angeles stop motion community. Um, and you know, that's one thing that I hadn't really put together until we were talking about it right here. Um, we were talking about the the contemporary art uh, community in LA, and it's 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 kind of interesting to me how that is a really sort of hot community right now with a lot of uh, innovation going on, but you also have a lot of innovation going on in the in the stop motion community, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's it's kind of cool like finding a way to like like bridge these two communities that right now in this particular city have so much innovation going on, and and I think that might be one of the things you're talking about when when there's you know uh, a lot of the the puppet builders um, have more tools that they can use because. There's been more innovations. There's there's um, there's sort of a, a, an expanding um, amount of uh, processes we can use for these. I mean, just for this film alone, um, we have cast and mold silicone puppets. We have foam build up puppets. Uh, we have replacement puppets, which you know I'd never really directed anything with replacement puppets before, where you replace out the entire puppet every every increment, um, and I just wanted to do it, uh, and so that's. You know something where it's like oh you want to try something out let's let's like try something out nice yeah yeah you got to play with a lot of stuff that i've always wanted to do like a 
a push pull shot with a bunch of bunnies. <laughs> uh, retrograde <laughs> zoom, yeah, that was that was fun. Yeah, you know, it's always you get these major influences, stuff like uh, Vertigo that you've seen all your life. You're like, oh, this yeah, is a beautiful yeah. shot. It's like, oh wait, we get to put this in a piece that we've done. Like, this is amazing. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, it's a special special journey. I mean, for, for everybody out there, I don't, I don't think Dan's comparing me to Hitchcock. <laughs> <laughs> so you have this motion control rig that, that you've acquired. Yeah, another piece of technology, as you that's you just uh, saying. Matt Huber, uh, he, he uh, is a, kind of a, a new guy to the community, but um, building some pretty amazing stuff. And, and, uh, Mad genius. Yeah, he's, uh, he's over in Culver City and... and um, Oh, he used to come by my house. Yeah, <laughs> he 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 uh, he built this this custom rig that has a really small footprint and can do a whole lot. And um, we've had the camera on it, whether we've used it or not, for every shot. We've had the camera on it for all but two or three shots for the entire film. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's been it's been really fun getting a little bit more freedom. Um, to play with camera moves because of having something mm -hmm. like that and and use it in, as another tool in, in the storytelling. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice and, and, you know, Pete and I were definitely on the same page. It's like you kind of want to start using it and do a lot of camera moves, but, if you know, too much is too much. So it's finding that balance, especially with stop motion. And Pete, Pete found that balance, that perfect balance. That's great. So, yeah, but, uh, yeah, thank you, Matt. We were very lucky. <laughs> yeah. To, to get to take your rig out into the world and drive it. Nice. Very nice. Now, we're at Musea's studio. Mm -hmm. Platypus Picture Works. It's a great name, man. Yeah. That's a great name. And uh, it's in, like, the best part of Pasadena. Yeah. South it's Pasadena. Just, it's yeah. crazy how nice it is over here. Yeah, lots of really good places to eat. Um, we're in the we're in the Munch District. <laughs> we have Munch uh, District. Thanks. We have we have Munch and Company downstairs across the street. We have Mix and Munch, and then right next door we have Menchies. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure that there's some people getting confused, but uh, no, I mean there's there's I don't know if uh, if by mentioning these places on the podcast. <laughs> Anybody from them is listening, and and uh, Pete wants free Robinson. sandwiches and yogurt. <laughs> how, how much? How much power does your uh, podcast, podcast have over the restaurant community? Well, very little, unfortunately. Okay. Well, maybe we, we can change pretend. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could make you a sandwich if you want. I mean, I never turned down a sandwich. Um, it's true. But uh, no, no, it's a, it's a great, great little, uh, little, little enclave here, and and uh, musée has been really generous with letting us use his studio even when he's not here he's come on as a producer for this project and he's he's done some animation and he's 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 helped us um on a lot behind the scenes uh sort of i don't know just strategizing for how to make this work and and also looking ahead in the future um so yeah he's been a real asset to the team and and it's it's nice having a studio where, you know, if you're working on a shot till 2 in the morning, you're working on a shot till 2 in the morning. Yeah. Or if you have to come in on a Saturday to finish a shot that you started on Friday, you come in on a Saturday. And and um, having that kind of leeway for a low-budget project like this has been a, a huge, huge help. And, yeah. um, I mean, honestly, I, I think if we hadn't had that type of latitude, we'd probably still be maybe in the middle of the project at this point mm, yeah. um, so it's it's uh, I mean that's another thing to think about uh, sure. for anybody out there making a short is just like they always take longer than you think and oh, exactly. if you can find some sort of a setup where you have the latitude even if it's like your living room or your garage or whatever like I, I have a garage mm -hmm. right? a fairly big garage and I set up a shot and it sits there for two years <laughs> So, I'm in that whole realm of, you know what, stop motion is amazing, I love to do stop motion, but if I'm going to do something and it's going to be a project, I've got to get it out of the house, or I have a forced deadline. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. if I force the deadline, then I can force myself to work on it, or hire somebody, or get somebody to volunteer, or something, to get it out the door. Otherwise, it sits in my garage, and I can't tell you how many projects I have sitting in there just waiting to be animated. Yeah. And they will never be animated. So. Well, it, it helps also like like a little mutual responsibility too. Oh, you yeah. know, I know that when I'm doing my own project in my garage, nobody else is around. You know, maybe mm -hmm. I, maybe I'll you know, 
watch a little Netflix or something, you know? Um, turn some music on and turn some music on. out on Facebook. And all of a sudden, three weeks have gone by. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, it, but if, you're, if you're coming into a studio and working with other people, um, even if it's just one other person, I know Dan and I, you know, there's there hasn't been that many people in besides me and Dan and Eric Atkins lately because we're need, winding down. But it, you it, need it one helps. other person around yeah. besides yourself that has a drive as like yourself that can get it through. Otherwise, if it's just you sitting in your house, you know. I mean, I interviewed you with that uh, um, Oreo, Orioles thing. Yeah, yeah. And it looked gorgeous, and I'm sitting there going, "Man, you must have spent every waking hour working on this." You know? Well, it was it was me and John Sumner for that though. Right. And if John Amazing. Sumner hadn't been on that, then I wouldn't have been able to get that one done either um, and we're we're just starting new ones for 2015 now oh uh, nice well that the was that 2014 or was it 2013 I can't that remember. was 2014 the ones that you so, saw but I was behind schedule for those because they were out of my garage and I didn't uh, have a hard deadline that, um, that video is getting released by the way uh, oh like cool just next week so. what oh cool yeah. that's awesome so because I have you know I did a Kickstarter for Indiegogo mm -hmm. for uh, in the shadows of life this documentary I was doing and because of work and because of other people's schedules, it made it impossible to do the documentary. Mm, it's yeah. not like doing a podcast where you just go, all right, you know, I'll just record everybody and we'll put it up there and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, a documentary where you're cutting and you're pasting and taking all the different elements, and then you go to somebody's studio and you spend like three hours there and you're, you're looking at the footage, you're going, man, i got to reduce this down to at least like ten minutes to fit it to the documentary. Yeah. That's not fair to them. So then I realized uh, they eat, everybody gets their own documentary. Wow. So, yeah. so you're going to do like a series of short documentaries? Yeah, there's already two up there right now. And oh, cool. Then, uh, and then you're, the, you're number three, I believe. Wow. And then uh, Granberry or um, him, Harry Chaskin are going to either be the um, fifth or awesome. seventh or whatever. Yeah, so. Wow. Good times. Man. Nice. Yeah. I like the community. I yeah. Gotta, I got to pay it forward. Well, yeah. it's, it's like, you know, sometimes I think about like, uh, like, and, I mean, I'd love L.A., um, but, you know, I think, like, oh, could I, like, move back to Baltimore, or would I ever want to move to New York, or, you know, um, I don't know, uh, cure a body or something. Yeah, like, who knows? <laughs> but it's, like, the thing that, the, the real pull that L.A. has for me is it just feels like this is, like, where all of, like, these crazy talented people from not just all over the country, but all over the world, you know, come to make cool visual stuff and and I feel like we couldn't find this community anywhere else you know there it's is. obscene yeah well, <laughs> Wednesday Pete and I are going this coming Wednesday going to an event and there's only two places in the world it could take place and that's LA and New York oh, that's great yeah. yeah going to see Jeff Goldblum do standards with yeah, nice. a, a group of you know amazing people that doesn't happen everywhere you know and you got to take advantage of it. I mean, Jeff Goldblum would be a tired guy if it did. <laughs> yeah, he would. It's, yeah. it's crazy how many people are coming out here just to do stop motion. But, you know, at one point, this was like a, uh, I always called it the, uh, the renaissance. Mm -hmm. It kind of came about. And uh, at one point, it was, you couldn't not throw a stone and somebody go, oh, yeah, stop motion. Right. You know, now it's like, eh, stop motion. <laughs> Even that, a lot of people were just like, Hot on the bit. What do you think we're we're due for another renaissance, or do you think we've already been in it? We're yeah. you know how, how the renaissance kind of ebbed and flowed sure. over a long period of time or yeah. a short period of time. But, uh, we've already approached into the renaissance. I think what we're we're, we're experiencing now is a um, uh, I would say like a downward mode, but kind of like not even a lull. I think we've we peaked, yeah, and we're just kind of riding that plateau right now. And I'm sure it's going to explode even more. But, so, uh, so uh, I'm just interested, sure. um, you've got Lego Movie, CG made to look like stop motion, sure, yeah, and yeah. Box Trolls, which looks like CG yeah, and incorporates CG, yeah. so I mean, where does that leave us? What do you think the next thing is? Do you think they'll be, be put more, you know? Well, you, Armacog or whatever the thing is, the video game, yeah. stop motion video game. Hey, game. shout out to them, they gave us a little boost on our Kickstarter, nice. they were really good to us, Pencil Test Studios. Yeah, yeah, So their stuff much, looks great. Much love to them. Um, there's been a, there's actually quite a few stop motion and clay animation video games coming out. Uh, clay Fighter is getting awesome. re-released, uh, my daughter plays this one clay game, I can't remember what, what it's called, Clay Smash or something, and it's just a little ball you kind of roll around, figure out what it is. But Anyway, um, there's a lot of stop motion getting incorporated into everyday life, and I think 
think what's happening is because there's so much of it, yeah. you know, in the media sense, that we're actually starting to uh, become desensitized by it. I think the other thing too is um, taking the, the, you know, like the whole box trolls thing with the CG faces and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, the faces are, are replacement animation and they're CG made, whatever, but there's animation, physical, like people moving the puppets. Yeah. And I think, that's a, I think that's a big part of the whole stop motion thing is, yeah, you can 3D print, you can do the replacement thing, but you actually have an animator sitting there and then sitting there at the studio watching them build the, the sets and do the whole lit, and you go, wow, this is layered. So you got somebody animating in the foreground, middle ground, and background. It's, it's insanity. And, and for all intents and purposes, um, you're not going to have the same kind of tactile texture feel in a, um, in a CG film that you will from stop motion. At least not yet. I, I, think, I think they will. They'll get to some point where you go, oh my god, that's amazing. And I, there's a, um, I'm really into CG, so there's a, um, there's a bunch of renderers out right now for you build your CG elements in whatever software you do, and then you, you render it in a, a, a different one. Um, and some of it is actually getting pretty damn close to realistic lighting to the point where you go, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Is that a photograph? Is that stop motion? Like, what is that? You know, it's, it gets a little nuts. You know, I think I think the other thing too is um, people are integrating fingerprints on. I don't know if you've seen this stuff. So CG stuff where they're integrating fingerprints on the actual CG yeah. characters, or there's a. Um, is that on Lego Movie first? <laughs> yeah, right. And then there's a uh, what do you call it? There's a um, porcelain. There's this one video. I think it's from the Netherlands or whatever or Europe. Mm -hmm. And it's all porcelain characters, but they're running through a city, and they're like those whole robbery and the movers and whatever else. And it's just gorgeous. And the first time I saw it, I goes, I was like, wow, that looks stop motion. That's not stop motion. It looks stop motion, <laughs> you know. And, you know, I think I think we're at that point where um, audiences. I don't know if they really care, but um, they want to be entertained and they want to have a medium that they can like and look at. And then uh, then you have the fans that want to do it. Or the kids that are interested, I want to start animating. So the easiest way to start animating is give them some stuff and start to take photographs. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas opposed to turning on a computer and learning a software, it takes a lot longer to learn that. I mean, another thing I think also to consider is that um, I don't I don't have the numbers in front of me, um, but is was Box Trolls? What was what was the cost of the budget compared to Lego Movie? Because oh, I don't even know that one, but I do know that they I, I feel did like a lot you can, of it in Australia. You can you can do a lot of uh, you can do a lot with a stop motion budget that you can also do in CG. But like you know, a lot of times it's it's still like cheaper than I think. Stop. A I lot think Box was cheaper. Imagine. Than, yeah, it was cheaper than uh, Lego. Um, you and I know people. I'm sure Dan knows them too. You know that worked on. Yeah, you definitely know uh, Chris McKay, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He was animation director on Lego, and yeah, there was uh, doing Lego Batman next. I figured he'd put that thumbprint there. <laughs> he might have, you know. And then uh, and there was Doug. Um, I don't know if you know Doug. Yeah, I know yeah. Doug. He used Doug to work did, over at a Buddy System, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's and uh, Dave Tuber. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, the, we the stop motion guys, hopefully thanks to Chris McKay, you know. Ended up working in Australia on the Lego movie, and that was kind of cool. And that, and that influence was really great. And you know what's really funny is I believe the Lego movie actually inspired even more Lego stop motion animation. Well, I, that's that's the thing. Also, yeah. that's the other the other point I was going to make is is that um, you know when I, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, this is a little scary um, because you know maybe it makes us redundant. But at the same time, a lot of people still don't realize Lego movie was CG mm -hmm. and. I'm sure that there's a lot of stop motion work going on right now because of the Lego movie, because sure. of that look. And and honestly, I mean, what we do is cut out the middleman. Um, you, you know, you, you don't need to build a CG model of a Lego if you have a Lego. Right, but I'd hate to build um, those explosions in stop motion. Right. <laughs> or the water waves in stop motion. Yeah. That was amazing. That, that opening sequence was probably one of the most amazing things to see was the movement, you see all the texture moving to the Legos. Yeah. You know, and then you realize that you're flying over top of it and that the Legos are actually moving. And then you, you swoop in, it's like this underworld type of thing. It's really cool. Yeah. You know? And then, then the last sequence in the movie was stop motion. Yeah, done at Buddy Systems. Mm -hmm. Oh, Stupid Buddy Studios. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, their studio is huge. 
It's a huge studio. If you look at how many square feet I they think have, it's, it's the probably the biggest billion. outside of Leica in the United yeah. States now, right? It's huge, yeah. And then they're running multiple things out of there, which is awesome. And and I think that that it's I mean it is like the biggest TV uh, yeah. stop motion TV production place, maybe in the world. I don't know. Well, I no, because be there's uh, a cup of coffee is up north of Canada. Is that they're is that big? big? I haven't been there. They're pretty big, and then. Um, what about, I guess Ardman probably has big TV stuff for Sean. Ardman, well, so you got to remember, Ardman has multiple, multiple warehouses that they'll open and use. Oh, so they'll wow. go rent a facility, which will be a warehouse, basically the same size as Stupid Buddy. And they'll oh. run a production out of there while they're doing another production somewhere else. So man, oh, I man. think I think the key thing is, you know, Ardman has their mass location, their big location that they have, their offices, and then they have their productions happen at warehouses. So, you know, they have a central house, and then they'll go rent warehouses to do the productions in. That's smart business. That's a great idea, yeah. I think the smartest thing is to own your facility. You know, so the renting renting the facilities is way a waste of money. You know, they're just pissing it away. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's one of the downfalls of Los Angeles as well, is the <laughs> cost of rent here is so astronomical. You could, if you could move stop motion to somewhere else, and I guess they, that's why Portland works so well, but Portland's kind of getting expensive now too, but if you can move it somewhere else to have a production somewhere else, you could actually have, you know, um, a better budgeting kind of situation going on. More money for the employees or the production or whatever. Yeah. I mean, my, my family's from uh, from Detroit. Oh, you, uh, could, you could get the whole city. No, I mean, but seriously, they, they have they have some, some <laughs> big spaces there, you know. If somebody wanted to open a stop motion studio in Detroit, there's, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know they've started doing live action features there. Um, and you could get a big warehouse super cheap there. The new Gotham is going on up there right now. Oh, is it? Oh, cool. The Gotham's being filmed up in Detroit. I mean, you know, the, for all the things that Detroit goes through, they have some great art and artists that come out of there. Yeah. There's a bunch of, there's a bunch of, I don't want to call them kids because they're adults, but there's a bunch of young adults that, uh, that work in the stop motion community come from a college up in that area. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's really, um, and they're really good, you know. Yeah. So. And John Sumner's from up there. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. We we bonded over uh, tigers and lions and bears and red wings and red wings. Nice. Um, hmm. We've kind of we've kind of gone through the gamut here. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Did uh? Were there any other like like questions you had for us or? No. All right. Um, but, but, <laughs> you know, a podcast where you sit and just, just have a conversation. Yeah. We had a really good conversation about everything. Um, we can start watching YouTube videos now. Yeah, we can totally like, hey, check them. that out. I, I'm really into these YouTube videos that are just like 10 hours of one thing. We were looking at, today we were looking at 10 hours of uh, the score from the movie Halloween 2. Ooh, I like 10 hours of Nyan Cat. Oh, uh, nice. That's nice. pretty cool. You put that on, it just goes. It doesn't yeah. stop. You sort of enter, a, I think, a Zen state at some point along the way there, you know? Well, there's there's now... I, I'm doing um, children's content. You uh-huh. know? I'm trying to make as much children's content as I can for YouTube. And um, when you look at the views and stuff, you get the highest view count. And there's a 10 hours of nursery rhymes or songs or whatever. And it's just children's songs. 10 hours of children's songs. How the hell did they get 10 hours? I guess... The kids just sit there and watch it over and over and over again. Yeah, there's got to be some repeat. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Oof. If I was a parent, I would go nuts. Yeah. And why are you letting your kid watch 10 hours of something anyway? You know? <laughs> oh, anyway. Yes. All right, guys. Well, uh, yeah. let's let's wrap this up. So um, I always do some kind of last words with, with the crew, and we have two guys tonight. So... Um, who wants to start? Give us some words of wisdom. Oh, the Pete, that's on you. Oh, that's on. that's on me. Uh, you both have to do it though. He's a wise right. guy, man. Uh, it's the beard, though. Words of wisdom. <laughs> I mean, the, honestly, like the 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 place where I draw my wisdom from most, as as you probably already know, John, is is baseball. Um, so I I would just say that um, if you haven't experienced baseball, um, I would say go to your uh, local ballpark when the Orioles are in town and, and you should root for them um, because it will probably help you be a better person in life. Like I say, he's a wise guy. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> on the hot on the heels of that, it's funny, he's much uh, he's a bigger baseball fan than I'll ever be, but I really do antiquate 
you know, stop motion to baseball, and this has been my pitch to a lot of people, it's a team sport, and you, you know, you need to rely on your people. You've got your pitcher or pitchers, your animators, and, you know, who's got the strengths and who's got the weaknesses. So I think baseball is a pretty good analogy. Um, well, I, I always say it like baseball. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, you see a Major League Baseball team, and, like, everybody on that team was the best person in their high school or the best person in their small town or whatever. Yeah. And um, that's how this feels to me. Like, that's how this community feels to me. And it's like, you know, um, I don't know. I just I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm humbled a lot by the, the artists in this community just because it's like, I don't know. Every time I think I've, I've, uh, you know, it's going to become routine or I've seen it all, like somebody does something where it's like, whoa, wait, you made what out of what? And you made this and like it's moving like that. And so, I don't know. I feel like we, we, have, a, we have an all-star team in this town here. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth, yeah. man. <laughs> That's awesome. And, yeah. I stole your wisdom idea. My wisdom! What would I do without it? Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Do what you love and patience. That's all I have. Nice. All right, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, John. Thank you, guys. Thanks, John. Thanks.